What's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In this one I'll be going over the best tips, tricks, and loadouts to help you get better at playing the best waifu and paladins, Barrack. Barrack is an insanely fun tank to play once you get good at him, and in Season 3 he is one of the absolute strongest tanks as well. His self-sustain is unmatched by all the other tanks, and he can usually outdamage just about any champion in your typical game of paladins. Honestly, I can say without a doubt that he is my favorite tank to play, and I am super excited to make this guide. So let's jump right in with a brief overview of Barrack's talents and kit, and then let's get into the loadouts where a lot of Barrack's strength lies. Barrack has a pretty simple but highly effective kit, with just a few notable changes in Season 3. Barrack has a blunderbuss which is most effective at close range, and is great at pumping loads of damage into just about anybody. It can also headshot which is really nice, letting him do a maximum of 750 damage per shot in close range. However, Barrack's bread and butter lies in his next three abilities, which are the source of his ridiculous self-sustain and survivability. First of all, he can deploy up to two turrets at a time, which will consistently lob projectiles at the enemy and help contribute to your overall DPS. They can even snag a kill from time to time on someone you didn't even know was there. These turrets also got buffed quite heavily in Season 3, receiving a direct buff with an increase in health from 600 to 1000, and an indirect buff with Bulldozer getting nerfed, making them much more resilient to Bulldozer Tainted Bullets. Barrack's movement ability also got a slight buff this patch, moving 10% faster and overall just being a very reliable ability to have. It's very helpful for juking enemies by weaving around his shield and turrets. And finally, his ultimate did receive a pretty significant nerf in Season 3 because the health of his shield was cut in half, from 20,000 HP to just 10,000 HP. However, this is in line with all the other shield nerfs and the downscaling of Wrecker this patch, so this isn't exactly that bad. The turret inside deals a ton of damage with its fire, dealing double the damage of Fernando's flame lance and burning for quite a few seconds. And as with his main turrets, it also got indirectly buffed by the bulldozer nerf, not that it wasn't already protected by a massive shield in the first place. Now let's move on to his talents. Right now, Architectonics is his strongest talent because of the buff turret health this patch, and a few loadout cards which benefit highly from the lower turret cooldown this talent gives. Architectonic simply gives a damage buff to the turrets, and it also lowers the cooldown so you can deploy them more often and keep two turrets on the battlefield at almost all times. It is a ton of fun to play with a good loadout, which I'll go over soon. Tinkerin used to be the best talent for Barrack, but unfortunately in Season 3 this received a huge nerf in damage, going from 560 damage a shot to just 480, which is 20 damage less than the base blunderbuss damage. Unfortunately, you also can't headshot with a Tinkerin projectile, but it still has some great utility in that it maintains its increased potency at range, allowing Barrack to be a threat from a much longer distance. Up close though, his normal blunderbuss is better, especially if you land a headshot. And finally, Fortify is simply a health buff for the shield, which also got downscaled this patch along with all the other shields, from 3000 to 2000. This can be helpful in a few scenarios where you expect to see a ton of damage on the point, but ultimately Fortify is his worst talent and the one you should be using the least. Alright, now we'll start out the different loadouts with my favorite loadout this patch, the Architectonics loadout. This loadout is all about buffing the turrets and making Barrack a self-sustaining machine, with Healing Station at 3 and Field Deploy at 4 to give Barrack a ton of healing. Healing Station is a pretty popular card among Barrack players for its reliability, since all you have to do is sit next to your turret to get healed. And in an Architectonics loadout, your playstyle is centered around the turrets, so this is an excellent card to have. However, Field Deploy is where a lot of your healing will be coming from in the heat of battle, since it heals you every time your turrets hit the target. Since his targets have a fire rate of 1 second, you can theoretically heal for 240 health a second if both your turrets hit their target. If you combine that with Healing Station, you can heal for a grand total of 345 health a second with his loadout. If we go ahead and compare this with Genos, you can see how crazy this healing really is. Genos heals for 2100 health over the course of 10 seconds, with his bursties heal occurring once at the start of the heal's duration. Barrack, on the other hand, heals for 3450 health over the course of 10 seconds, assuming his turrets hit their mark each time they shoot, which is noticeably higher than Genos' healing. Of course, the turrets don't always hit their targets, so if we assume that the turrets have 50% accuracy over the course of 10 seconds and then do the math, we can see that Barrack still heals for a whopping 2250 health, which is still more than Genesis' heal. The self-sustain Barrack has is truly insane. The rest of this loadout is pretty self-explanatory, with forged alloy and combat repair so your turrets stay alive longer since they're your main source of sustain, and brave and bold so you can get right up in people's faces and not worry about dying as quickly. Next, let's move on to the Fortify loadout. Fortify should really only be used when you know you're going to need to block a lot of damage on point from spammy champions like Dredge, or if you want to block out some sniper fire from the point while you duel the enemy tanks. I do not recommend using this talent and loadout for normal matches though. 
This loadout was designed to be shield-oriented while not completely neglecting the rest of his kit, with Bunker at 5 to maximize the amount of health the shield has, and Foundation at 3 to give it some decent uptime. The reason we don't have Foundation at 5 is because in the late game when most damage champions will probably have Wrecker, your shield will most likely be destroyed before it finally goes down, so having 5 points into Foundation would simply be a waste. The rest of the loadout points are allocated into Brave and Bold for more health, One Man's Treasure to help you reduce the cooldown of his shield and his other abilities, and Double Time as the filler card for a bit of self-healing. This loadout doesn't have nearly as much self-sustain as the other builds in this video, but that's because you're mainly relying on the shield to keep you alive with his talent. You really need to be good at straddling your shield with this build, which is a technique we'll talk about later in the video. These last two loadouts are for Tinkerin, which is really his most aggressive talent. With the increased effective range from this talent, Barrick really becomes a killing machine, and should go around squashing squishy champions with his majestic All beard. Right. Now, one important thing to mention before I get into both of these loadouts is that they synergize very well with Luminary, since they have some great self-sustain to make up for Genesis' lack of potent heals, and Tinkerin works extremely well with a damage buff from Luminary. I have two different versions of a Tinkering loadout, with the first being the Season 3 take on what I like to call the Legacy Barrack build. This type of build focuses around the classic combination of Bowling Ball and Failsafe to keep Barrack alive as he ravages the enemy forces, because while Bowling Ball did get nerfed a little bit, it's still quite fun to use. This loadout also has Brave and Bold for extra health, which is crucial with Barrack, and it has Field to play which is the Season 3 twist on this loadout that provides Barrack with some strong self-sustain that doesn't tie him down to one spot like Healing Station does. It's dependent on the turret's scoring hits, so it pays to place turrets in places where they have a good vantage point on the enemy team and can easily hit them. The next loadout is very similar but focuses heavily on healing instead, and can be helpful in situations where you won't be receiving very much healing. The major difference here is that we have double time at 4 instead of bowling ball at 5, which provides a total of 1,280 healing over its duration and can stack with itself, so if you drop below 20% health and failsafe grants you another use of rocket boots, you can receive double the amount of healing. The extra point is then allocated into field deploy, which feels absolutely fantastic at level 4. Now let's get into the gameplay tips for Barrack. Barrack is a ton of fun once you learn how to play him properly, and with good game sense and aim he becomes one of the hardest champions to kill despite having one of the lowest health pools out of all the tanks. First of all, it's important to learn proper turret placement for a point fight. What I find helps is to have the two turrets on either side of the objective, both within range of Barrack so he can heal them with the Architectonics build and so he can receive the healing from Healing Station. This effectively creates a zone spanning most of the objective where you'll receive healing and you can simply place a shield right at the front of the objective to block incoming damage. Of course, if you're pushing up, being aggressive and fragging out, turret placement is a bit less important so long as you place them where they can easily shoot any enemies. Another helpful tip for turret placement is that they can actually ride the payload, so with some careful placement you can have a moving turret or two with a view over the entire payload region. While this is great for dealing damage, it's important to note that they are much easier for the enemies to destroy because they're elevated right on top of the payload where the focus of the battle is. Next let's talk about straddling the shield, which is an important technique to learn for surviving an incredibly long time in a close quarters brawl. Shield straddling basically involves placing down your shield in front of an enemy, then when they try and walk through the shield to shoot you, you quickly go to the other side of the shield. Basically, you're sort of in the middle of the shield, and can easily go on either side depending on where the enemy is trying to shoot you from. While it seems extremely complicated, it's not too hard once you get the hang of it as you can see here, and it's a really helpful technique to learn for winning duels and staying alive for ages. There are two other useful ways you can avoid taking damage thanks to Barrack's incredibly short hitbox. Because he is the shortest tank, he can hide behind the payload and make it very hard for anyone looking directly on the payload to shoot him. Of course, this doesn't work as well if the enemy team uses the Obi-Wan strategy, the high but against another tank who's trying to contest the payload, it can be very helpful and it can be extremely annoying to fight against. Similarly, you can hide behind your turrets and try and block some incoming damage, since the turret hitboxes are only slightly smaller than Barrack's hitbox and have quite a lot of health with the Architectonics build. While it does mean your turret will likely get destroyed if you use it to body block, it's much better that the turret get destroyed than you. Lastly, let's go over how to use his ultimate. Barrack's ultimate is incredibly powerful and can be used in a variety of ways. The most obvious way to use it is to slap it down on point right when the enemy tanks are there in the middle of a heated fight. This will most likely score some incredible damage on the tanks because of the flamethrower turret which people always underestimate, and it will protect you from the thousands of incoming damage with the massive health of the shield dome. This usually turns the tide of battle in Barrack's favor, and is a superb way to use his ultimate. My favorite way to use his ult though is by being aggressive and using it to deal damage, kind of like a zoning ult except it's right on top of the backline champions who are getting incinerated. Basically, if your team has already secured the objective and is in the process of capturing it, you can push forward and zone, and when you find a group of enemies, use your rocket boots to engage and throw your ult right on their face. On Squishy Champions, the combination of the fire, Barracks blunderbuss, and the turrets is enough to score a free kill, and it can be incredibly useful for making sure the enemies never reach the objective. 
However, there are a few instances in which you don't want to use your ultimate because it will be countered and destroyed. For starters, you must always remember that Sky's Bomb destroys all shields, including the Dome Shield. This means that you cannot protect yourself from her bomb with Dome Shield, and the interior turret will also be destroyed because the shield will fail to protect it from the blast. Another strong counter to Dome Shield is Rom's ultimate, which also completely destroys all shields and deployables. When you're up against a Rom and you want to use Dome Shield, you should either wait until he's dead or far away, or use it after you've seen his ult already go off. Because a smart Rom will always save his ultimate for Dome Shield if there's a barrack in his match, usually the first option of waiting until he's not there is best. Alternatively, you could use it anyways to draw out his ult and briefly block something scary like an ult in Knessa for a second or two, and maybe ignite Rom with the flamethrower briefly before he smashes your ult. However, it's generally advised to wait until you know he can't ult you before you use Dome Shield. Alright, the last thing we're going to talk about is items. Most items work great on Barrack, and usually buying Cauterize or a defensive item is the best way to start a round, depending on the enemy team's comp. If you expect to receive a ton of damage, go for a defensive item, but if you think you'll have the freedom to frag out, then go Cauterize for sure. Bulldozer is also helpful on Barrack if you're up against an IO, but I don't really recommend buying Wrecker just because it kinda sucks this patch, and you usually don't want to be shooting shields with Barrack. As far as utility items go, Kronos can be helpful with a Fortify build since the goal is to have the shield up as much as possible, and Morale Boost is extremely helpful if you enjoy using his ult frequently and aggressively like I do. The one utility item that isn't really worth your credits in my opinion is Nimble, just because there are far better things which you could be spending your credits on. And lastly come the healing items, which you don't really need at all except for Rejuvenate. Because Barrack has so much self-sustain in his kit, you don't really need to be picking up any items to further supplement that healing, and especially don't buy Veteran. Barrack's not the type of tank you ever want to be out of combat with unless it's absolutely necessary, and because his health pool is so small, you don't really get that much of a benefit out of Veteran like you would with other tanks. If you do want to pick up a second healing item though, go for Kill to Heal, because it's very easy to get kills and assists with Barrack because of his extremely high damage potential through his blunderbuss and two turrets. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Did this guide help you get better at Barrack, one of the strongest tanks in the realm? Let me know in the comments down below, and also don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload from me. Also, join the Discord server down below to pick up tips, leave suggestions, and become a part of our active community. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.